Mr. Minister, uh, thank you very much for your time. Let me first ask you about the um, the recession, the the quarter on quarter GDP slump. Was that a surprise to you? Look, I um, we did we do indeed acknowledge that it was lower than I mean uh, we it, I mean it was deeper than we expected. Um, we didn't think it would um, slide into another contraction. Um, because the improvement was in sectors that did not deliver adequate uh, growth, like uh, mining, uh, whilst agriculture was uh, the actually the, the the one that actually took the bigger the biggest uh, thing. So, w- when you look at that, um, what do you expect for the rest of the year? Are you going to have to be cutting your GDP growth forecast because of this number? Or are you going to be cutting your expectations for what comes? in the following quarters? Look, we are looking at the numbers, uh, Matt, and um, as things stand, um, you know, the only opportunity we have is now our mid-term, midterm budget to look at the numbers. But um, at the moment, we think this was uh, the normalization of after, I mean, uh, in output after the strong growth in 2017 in agriculture. And um, uh, some of the sectors um, that have picked up, like mining, um, you know, are likely to accelerate going forward. And also we are investing more in some of the sectors. And with our structural reforms, we think we should be able to turn it around. At the moment, we still keep the focus the same. Are you concerned about, uh, Mr. Minister, the slide in the currency? We've already highlighted that it's dropped um, to a two-year low. If I look at the one-month volatility, it's jumped to a, at least a five-year high, if not more. Is there something that you can do to halt this slide, to halt this volatility in the RAND? Look, as you know, we, we have a, um, a, a floating exchange rate, and um, we are unlikely to change policy that easily. Uh, but uh, with the independence of the central bank, uh, it is up to the bank to actually monitor uh, the developments and take the appropriate action. But uh, as you know, uh, the um, you know the, the rand is one of the most traded uh, currencies in the um, emerging market. So its vulnerability lies there more than anything else. So it does serve as a shock absorber, and um, our hope is that. Our exports, if our exports were to respond much more robustly to that, we would be able to, uh, to weather the storm. What can you do um, in the finance ministry? What can President Ramaphosa do in order to help restore market confidence, both uh, domestically and overseas in South Africa? Look, we're putting together a package. In fact, we were in the middle of that uh, process, putting together a pe- package to respond uh, to the uh, to, to the external shocks as, as uh, we speak. And we are al- we're likely to. I mean, the president had already. We had a discussion uh, about a month ago or two in uh, July and August, where we worked on something, and um, we're meeting in cabinet again on Wednesday. Uh, to present that uh, package, which is a structural reform package that deals with a number of uh, uh, areas that we think would make a difference, including our release of the spectrum and our, um, you know, um, and undoing of uh, some of the bottlenecks, the release regulations, and the, um, uh, you know, the uh, single transport um, economic regulator. All of those are part of the package, and uh, the president will be announcing his part. And I will also be announcing part of that in uh, our midterm budget policy statement in October. But uh, some of um, these um, initiatives are already underway. Is you, I mean, speaking of your midterm budget, are you going to be able to stick to uh, 3.6% fiscal deficit target, or are you going to have to boost spending and boost borrowing? Look, we're looking at the numbers, as I said. We would not be able to uh, to say now before the midterm budget. That's the only official communication that we issue as government uh, during that period. What, when you when you look at this package of um, reforms or this package that you want to put together to, to show the market confidence, do you work, for example, with ratings agencies like Moody's? Are you concerned that those agencies are going to 
cut their outlooks on South African debt to negative? Look, we stay in touch with ratings agencies, but also they have their timing in terms of, uh, uh, of when they engage with us. Uh, because we do not, uh, you know, uh, pick up the phone and, and call them every time there is a development, because they also need to uh, look at the performance in general, not only one event, as, uh, as we speak. What, what, when, I, when I look at your situation, it's made worse by the trade concerns. Some would say trade war uh, being waged by Donald Trump and the president, the president in the U.S. How is that affecting your economy, Mr. Minister? All of those external shocks have a huge negative impact. But our focus is, no, is more on what it is that we can do in order to create buffers and also to insulate ourselves against those buffers because there's not much you can do about the external shocks other than just making sure that you um, insulate yourself against them. You are in Beijing right now, Mr. Minister. Are you there to talk trade with the Chinese? We have been talking trade with the Chinese. We first did a state visit, but also collectively as African states. We had a um, meeting of the Forum of uh, China-Africa uh, Cooperation. Um, and uh, we are looking at investment opportunities as well in this uh, in this space. And uh, uh, proceeding from here, we also have another uh, investment investing in Africa conference organized by the World Bank in the province of uh, Hunan, which is tomorrow and the day after. So all of these initiatives are intended to actually try and boost our, uh, to boost confidence, but at the same time uh, attract investment uh, into the country. All right, Mr. Minister, thank you very much for your time. Really appreciate it this morning. South African Finance Minister Nene joining us on the phone from Beijing.